Do you want to use my mic once again? Alright. Sikip na lang. Here we go. Go sa lata. Number two. Are you ready? Alright, here we go. I can repeat it thrice if you want. Okay. Here's the question. So the music name tends to Anyway, given the increasing tensions in the South China Sea, what diplomatic strategies should the Philippines employ to protect its national interests? Another one. Given the increasing tensions in the South China Sea or West Philippine Sea, what diplomatic strategies should the Philippines employ to protect its national interest? You want me to translate? Okay. Hmm. Dahil sa tumitinding tension sa South China Sea, anong mga estratehiyang diplomatiko ang dapat gamitin ng Pilipinas upang protektahan ang pambansang interest nito? We cool? You want to All right. Thank you so much. Well, that is really a very hard question. Of course, it is all about politics and people has different their own beliefs and opinion regarding this matter. And whatever will come from my mouth and from my mind, this is just my very own opinion and it has nothing to do with the opinion of anyone that's right here tonight. So what are the steps that our government will be able to do in order to protect its personal interest or national interest in the South Philippine Sea? Well, I believe that first of all, it is important for us to be able to communicate with the leaders. It really takes a very important thing in order for them to resolve the, these things. Because just come to think of it, if our leader would just set aside the, their pride up high, if they're going to try to understand and this, just share this specific territory, then we will be able to prevent killing war and hurting one another because i always believe that the leader are the one that should resolve this problem yes we can voice out our very own opinion of course it is a part of our territory we want to own it we really want us to be able to fight for it but then again let us not forget that if we are going to force the china to give up that part and we philippines were going to fight for it we are declaring war and the question is, are we going to win this war if we don't have enough weapons for us to be able to protect our territory? Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of you might be thinking that you wanted to fight for the territory itself. But as, but as I myself, I always believe that life is the most important gift of God. I do not want to see a Filipino fighting for this territory and yet they are sacrificing their lives. People will lose their loved ones. People would lose the the dreams that they do have in them if they're going to declare a war against China. So I should say that the most important thing for us to be able to still protect our national interests with this territory, the leaders should talk to the leaders of China for them to be able to understand the importance of camaraderie, unity. They should not be fighting against just a territory and sacrifice the lives of their own national people. At the end of the day, if these people will lose their life, then what is the importance of that territory? It doesn't make sense at all. Thank you. Thank you, Canada. Question. How can the Philippines contribute to global efforts in combating climate change while ensuring the livelihoods of its citizens are not adversely affected? Repeat it once again. How can the Philippines contribute to global efforts in combating climate change while ensuring the livelihoods of its citizens are not adversely affected? I will translate it in Filipino. Paano makakatulong ang Pilipinas sa pandaigdigang pagsisikap sa paglaban sa pagbabago ng klima habang tinitiyak na hindi masama ang epekto sa kabuhayan ng mga mamamayan nito? Marami pong salamat. 
as a Filipino, since the question relates to us being Filipino and what can the Philippines contribute to the global economic crisis of climate change and so on and so forth, isa lamang ko ang naiisip ko. Ang isa sa ugali natin mga Pilipino, ito po ay ang pagiging makabayan natin, ang pagmamahal sa sarili nating bayan. Marahil na pataas kayo ng kilay kung bakit ito ang aking nasagot. Isa lamang po ang masasabi ko. Kung mahal nyo ba ang inyong bayan, tatapunan nyo ng basura. Kakalatan ninyo. Ang mga ilog ba at mga batis natin, inyong luyurakan at wawasakin? Ang ating kagubatan ba ay inyong susunugin? Puputulin ang mga puno upang gawin lamang nating pangkabuhayan. Nang sa gayon nakakalbo na ang ating mga gugat. Kung mahal ba natin ang ating bansa, sisirain ba natin ito? Gagawin ba natin ang mga bagay na nakakasira sa ating mundo? Hindi. And that is the lesson that I want to share, not just to the Philippines, but to the world. Ito po yung pwede natin ituro sa kanila. Yung pagiging makabayan natin, yung pagmamahal natin sa ating bayan. Bakit mga kaibigan, paano mo i-influensyahan yung mundo kung sa sarili mo mismo hindi mo magawa yung mga bagay, simpleng pagpunot lang ng kalat dyan. Paano mo sasabihin sa mundo, pangalagaan natin ng kalikasan, so on and so forth, kung ikaw mismo sa tapat ng iyong bakuran, makalat. Kung sa tapat ng iyong mga ilog, doon kayo tumatae, doon kayo nagtatapon ng mga basura, paano natin sila makukumbinsi if we don't start within ourselves? My dear friends, Board of Judges tonight, lagi nating tatandaan, ang dali-daling sabihin, pero ang hirap kong gawin. Bakit? Dahil minsan sa ating buhay, saan ba napupunta yung mga kinakalat natin? Yung mga nabiliiklit na pirasong papel? Yung mga tinatapon natin? Napupunta yan sa kabubatan. Napupunta yan sa mga dagat na kung saan nakakain ng ating mga isda, nakakain ng mga patin, ng mga pagong, at kung ano-ano pa. At yan ang lumalanghap, tumataas, nagiging ulan. Hangin na nilalanghap natin galing sa pollution, sa basura, at sa kung saan-saan pa mga kaibigan. And that is the air we breathe. Payag ba kayo na yung nilalanghap nating hangin madumi? Na yung hangin lalanghapin ng susunod na henerasyon ng ating mga kabataan, ng inyong mga anak at mga kaapu-apuan sa tuhod? Hindi na nila mararanasan yun mga kaibigan. Nais nyo hubang maglakad ng isang araw, lahat tayo nakagas mask na lang. Na lahat ng ating mga kwento, ang mga falls, rivers, and our natural resources, mababasa na lamang natin sa mga pahina ng libro. Hanggat maaga mga kaibigan, isa lamang pumumutawi ko ho sa inyo. Tayo mismo sa ating mundo. Umpisahan natin sa ating bahay. Tamang segregation lang. Nabubulok, nabubulok, recyclable, and so on and so forth. Let us start from within. And when, maybe we can influence other people. And when they see that, doing those things, we can post it on social media for all the world to see. Na makita nila na ang Pilipino pala, ganun kamahal ang sarili nilang bansa. Malay ninyo, maka, makapag-influensya tayo sa kanila, mahalin din nila ang sarili nilang bansa. Yun lamang ho ang aking kasagutan. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, sir. Number, please. Alright, question number four. Are you ready? You must be, honey. In the context of the Philippines' war on drugs, how can human rights be upheld while effectively addressing the issue of illegal drug trade? I will repeat, definitely. In the context of the Philippines' war on drugs, how can human rights be upheld while effectively addressing the issue of illegal drug trade? Sumabay yung salin ko in Filipino. Sa konteksto ng gera kontra droga sa Pilipinas, paano mapapanatili ang karapatang pantao habang epektibong tinutugunan ang isyu ng illegal na kalakalan ng droga? Maraming salamat po sa napaka-interesadong patalungan. Para po sa akin, we will start it by 
simply properly balance implementations of our law in our country. Why should I say so, ladies and gentlemen? We have what we call red tagging. Let me explain to everyone what is red tagging. Yung nakatayo at nakaupo doon sa bandang likuran na, na yun. Pwede siyang i-red tag na siya ay gumagamit ng droga without proper back checking background. I firmly believe that as a leader, we should inculcate in our mind that we should be properly careful of implementations of our law. And we should check a background checking if that person really using a drugs. I always believe, my dear friends, that in this world, no one have the right to take your life because I always believe that life is a wonderful gift that we should cherish from our Almighty God. I always believe, my dear friends, if someone will find out that that person are using a drugs, I believe that it's not our rights to kill or taking away the life of that person. Why? Because there are so many ways on how they will punish. Maybe we can send them into jail where they can where they can um mapagsisisihan nila to sa habang buhay nilang pagkakakulong. Or therefore, pag nagkaroon na sila ng pagbabagong buhay, they will be given what they call pardon. Diba? I always believe that in this our country that we should value our life we should value every individualities of every filipinos because i always believe my dear friends that it is not the best resolution to kill the life of every citizen of this country but what we but what we need is a proper implementations and giving the value of what we call life that is my simple and precise answer to this to this conservative and sensitive question maraming salamat po thank you very much can i just say you are very progressive here we go as a leader how would you address the challenge of balancing economic development with the preservation of indigenous cultures and traditions in the Philippines. Once again, as a leader, how would you address the challenge of balancing economic development with the preservation of indigenous cultures and traditions in the Philippines? I'll translate in Filipino. Bilang isang Leader, paano mo tutugunan ang hamon ng pagbabalanse ng pagkutlat pang ekonomiya sa bayin ng pagpapalaganap ng katutubong kultura at tradisyon sa Pilipinas? We're cool? We're cool. Thank you. It is very imperative that our country is facing an economic challenge when it comes to addressing the indigenous people or what we call IP. I believe as a journalist, we should, as a journalist, it is my responsibility to tell everyone that ang ating Pilipinas po ay hindi po ito ang ating tinatamasa ngayon kung wala po ang ating mga katutubong Pilipino. Kung baga po sa isang puno, sila po ang ating ugat. Tayo lamang po ang ating, at tayo lamang po ang kanilang mga bunga. So as a leader, I believe that we should have and we should address the importance of indigenous people here in our country, especially to name such is Apo Wang Ud. She is one of our uh, one of our um, tattoo artists um, that been named for being such a re recognizable tattoo artist here in our country. But you know what? She is not recognized as a national artist. Because according to them, she does not um, she does not meet the criteria of being a national artist. And I believe as a leader, 
we should address that is specific, that tantamount, um, tantamount criteria for us in order for us to uplift the indigenous people because as I've said earlier, they are the roots of our Philippinism. Sila po ang nagpasimula ng ating pagka-Pilipino. Ang pagtalikdan sa kanilang ating mga katutubo ay para, para na rin pong pagtalikdan sa ating kasaysayan. Sa pahina ng bawat ng ating kasaysayan. Because as a journalist, it is my responsibility. And what I can do is I will write articles from day to night. Features article that will uplift those indigenous people in order for me to get the information relayed to each and everyone, especially to our children. Ang mga katutubong Pilipino na lamang po ba ay makikita nila sa mga larawang kupas? Ang mga katutubong Pilipino na lamang po ba ay makikita nila sa internet na hindi po nila alam kung ano nga ba ang tunay na kalagayan nila? Kaya I am here as a journalist, as a writer. I am calling out all our government officials, the National Commission on Arts, in order for them to uplift and give the opportunities what our indigenous people, what our katutubong Pilipino deserve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very well read. A journalist indeed. I'll challenge our last candidate for this portion of Q&A. Candidate number three, Ms. Ann Curtis. Hi. Hi, Lillian. I pick number one. You pick number one. We hope you are. Right? Of course. Yes. Great. Okay. Salita, Mami P. Okay, here we go. This is your question. If you were to advocate for one policy change that would have a significant impact on the LGBTQ plus community in the Philippines, what would it be and why? Again, if you were to advocate one, uh, one policy change that would have a significant impact on the LGBTQ plus community in the Philippines, what would it be? And what? In Filipino? Kung ikaw? Okay, alright, thank you. If I were to advocate one policy for the LGBTQA plus community, there is only one thing that comes into my mind, and that is for the health and welfare of all the LGBT community, and is specific to allowing them to have their own or a separate restroom for them. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to think of it, people will still see us as someone who they can just accept, or, or they can just tolerate, but not fully accept. If you're going going to have a separate room for us LGBTQA plus community then I would believe or I would say that acceptance is truly remarkable. Thank you. Thank you. That was very very sweet. Alright.